All right, the carving's all done. We've got the texture material on its braids. You can see where I've uh, gone back and spotted in the air holes. So uh, it's all ready to go. And then I hit it with the flap sander just to take the rough part off. So now we're talking about the feathers. All right. Uh, I finished three feathers, but I've decided that I'm only going to use two. So what I've done here is I've shaved off a little bit of the wood on this feather and this feather to get them to lie, lay as flat as they can, like that. Just put that one out of the way. I'm going to cross them like that. Just like that. I'm going to take some super glue. Just put a drop in there. Take some accelerant. Put that on there and wait just a second and that should go off. Now that super glue is not going to be the main thing that's holding these feathers together. As we'll, I'll show you here in just a second. All right, so they're together now. So let's just see, see what we got here. We want these feathers, there we go, I think that's where they'll go, right up there. Yep, I think so. Okay, so we got them together now. Now what I'm going to do is take some thread here, pull me off a bunch. Just wrap that around there like that. Hold those down. Take my super glue and just soak that thread. stuff goes off quick, doesn't it? How many of you guys have, and girls have ever glued your fingers together? I have several times. <laughs> Once I had to cut them, cut them apart with a knife. Super glue is strong, but I've never relied on it, you know, for holding something together. Because it's very brittle when it uh, finally goes off. And I just don't trust it. Oh, you can see that I went and I varnished my... Uh, stained and varnished my uh, mount here. I use walnut all the time and occasionally I'll use oak but one thing I make sure I always use a hardwood. Walnut, oak, those are the best things. Oak going to give you a lighter colored base. Walnut's going to give you a nice dark base. And I use uh, a real dark, I think this is dark walnut stain and then I, uh, I spray this and why do I spray it? Because it's all the surfaces are basically flat and spraying it will give me a nice coat where if I brush it on it's going to give me uh, brush marks which I don't want. Now when I put varnish on the carving I don't get brush marks because the 
the carving is porous and it's going to soak in. But being as this has been varnished or stained before I varnish it, that's not going to happen. Plus it's hardwood, really hardwood. Uh, so it's not going to soak in like a piece of basswood. But a base makes the carving. If you don't put a base on your pieces, I just don't think that uh, they're finished. Okay, there's a nice flat area right here. Look at it. Mm -hmm. And I get the, the ends of the quill sticking up up there and nice feathers. So that's right exactly where I'm going to put it. So the first thing I want to do, and the feather will be anchored to the head by a uh, four penny galvanized uh, nail. Okay, again, a galvanized nail is rough, so I'll be using uh, epoxy, and uh, epoxy will hang on to this rough, rough surface a lot better than if it was a, you know, a common nail, which it would be shiny. Okay, so I'm going to take my drill, I'm going to just drill right through this area right here. through there like that see just like that but before I do that I'm going to line it up on my head find the spot exactly where I want it where the feathers cross right in the middle of his braid if I can. That looks like it's just going to be it right there. Let's see if I can swing that feather down a little. Yep. So that will be it right there. So turn it around here like that. Now the feathers a little or the tail hose a little off center than from the uh, midline of the Hair, but the cross is right on the midline, which is what I like. And holding it in place. That would be one hell of a headache, wouldn't it? So now we put that on there and we finally see what she's going to look like. gonna look nice. Now the last video I said that the uh, feathers have a curve to them and I was corrected by someone who said that that's not necessarily true that the tail feathers of a bird are straight. That's probably correct so I stand corrected. But I like to use a curved feather because a curved feather let's get this off of here on. A curved feather, again, it's curved. So what it's doing when you put it on the carving, see how the curve of the feather brings itself into the piece? It, it, it's almost caressing it. See there how much better that looks? Now if I take that off, <laughs> This is why I like galvanized nails, before they hang on there. Now here's that straight feather. This feather's straight. Now let's put that one on there and see what it looks like. There, see, see the difference? The difference in the effect of it? See, it? the feather is going off in that direction where the curved feather is coming around. It's bringing your vision and uh, Right, it's bringing your vision right back to the piece. See, it just brings it, brings it right back. 
brings takes your attention. Put that out of the way. Okay, I'm gonna put that feather there, but first let's see. Well there's enough space there. I'm gonna put some super glue on that nail right there. Again, I'm going to epoxy, epoxy that nail onto the uh, head. I think I'll put some more right here, just to keep that head of that thing in place. With the Okay, so we got that. All right, now, we don't want to see that nail, do we? Of course not. Let me get a paper towel to wipe the excess stuff off there. one here. See, it's got a nail. I actually went through the shaft of the uh, quill with this one, but we're not going to do that with that one. We're going to take this, get some of this. This is again that modeling paste that I picked up down at the Hobby Lobby. It's just acrylic paint is basically all it is, but it's uh, real thick. And what I'm doing here is I'm putting this all over the base of the, where these two feathers go together because when uh, they make headdresses and things, a lot of times they will put these feathers on here as just an added, or feathers. Well, they are feathers, or fluff, just a fluff of a feather. And I just stipple it like that. And I leave my thread showing because, again, when a Native American makes a headdress, he will uh, wrap the base of his feather and usually paint it red. I think red's one of their favorite colors. And I like to get enough of it to where it hangs off of the feather as fluff really would. And as this dries, it's also going to just glue those feathers together even more. Take a couple days for this stuff to dry. But it always looks good. Like that square look there. I do all these different things with my carvings because I look at my carvings as sculpture more than I look at them, look at them as a, just a wood carving. 
It's like a person who works in clay, basically, except I work in wood. But it's still sculpture. And as a person who works in clay does, they use all kinds of mediums besides just clay to do their sculpture. So, you know, what's the difference? There you go. That's looking pretty good. Let me roll it. Let's Excess off of here. That looks good. Another thing, when you get this stuff, when you get this stuff, after you use it, uh, you don't get that great a seal on your cap when you screw the lid on. So what I do is I, before I put the lid on after I've done uh, my project, I always take my squirt bottle back there with just filled full of water, and I just give it a squirt or two down in here, and that'll help keep this stuff from going off. Because there's so much stuff in here, uh, if you don't do that, you're going to end up throwing away quite a bit of it. Okay? So... In the next video, we'll, well, we're eventually going to paint these feathers. In the next video, we will start painting the Indian. And uh, we're heading on the downhill slope now. And we're getting into the area that I really enjoy doing because I, I like to paint. And this guy is going to be nice once he's painted. I still have to burn a couple lines across here that would indicate a black stripe because the blanket's going to be sort of a, oh, a deep red and it's a Hudson Spay blanket, point blanket. So it'll have this black stripe going across there and it's also going to have some points which uh, indicates the size of a blanket. People used to say that the point system, if you saw a Hudson's Bay, Bay Blanket with four points or three points or whatever. That indicated that it was that many beaver pelts for the person to buy that blanket, but that's not true. The point system was how big the blanket was. Like if it was a four point, four point blanket, that's a pretty good size blanket. Larger than a three point blanket. Okay. All right, so anyway, until next time, I'll talk to you later, and I'll go clean my brush.